A very warm welcome to the Global Veritas Challenge 2021 winner's announcement. I'm Kate from Accenture, your host for the day. Together with me, I have my co-host from the Monetary Authority of Singapore, Sopnendu Mohanty, Chief Fintech Officer, Shi Chun Li, Head of AI Development Office, and from Accenture's Applied Intelligence Practice, Jun Xiong Li. We have along with us our esteemed panel of judges, whom you will get to meet a little later. This event is proudly brought to you by the Monetary Authority of Singapore in partnership with ASEAN Financial Innovation Network and Accenture as part of the Veritas Initiative. Our mission of the Global Veritas Challenge is to drive industry, collaboration and implementation of innovative artificial intelligence and data analytics solutions aligned with the desired feed principles centred around fairness, ethics, accountability and transparency. We greatly appreciate all the organisations across the globe who have contributed to this challenge. To kick things off, please allow me to hand the time over to Sopnandu and Jun Xiong, our Veritas champions. Over to you. Good evening. Artificial intelligence and data analytics, or IDA, has tremendous benefit with many users across different sectors, many of which are in finance. However, IDA is not without its risk and must be used responsibly. One area where we can work to ensure responsible IDA use is to prevent our human biases from affecting IDA-driven decisions and perpetuating existing prejudices. The Global Veritas Challenge is an important part of an ongoing journey the MAS and the industry embarked on to promote the responsible use of IDA. We first released the Fairness, Ethics, Accountability and Transparency Principles collectively known as FEET in late 2018 to provide the industry with a set of principles to consider when using IDA in decision making. They were, they were co-created with, with the industry and other stakeholders. We then announced Veritas, a framework which could allow FIs to evaluate their IDA solutions against the FIT principles. The Veritas Consortium was formed to work on the framework and comprises of MAS and various industry partners. To date, the consortium has released two white papers on the fairness assessment methodology and open source code of the two use cases. The Global Veritas Challenge was conceived to accelerate the development of solutions which validated IDA solutions against the FIT principles. We garnered great response from the ecosystem and received close to a hundred, of, hundred proposals of innovative solutions from fintech, technology providers and financial institution, institutions across the world, each of which presented unique solutions to transform and enable scalable, fair use of AI in the areas of product marketing, risk, compliance, fraud monitoring, loan origination, KYC, credit scoring and profiling. We're delighted to have partnered Accenture for the Global Veritas Challenge 2021. Thank you, Sundendu. At Accenture, we believe in placing responsible AI at the core of our approach in designing impactful solutions. Embedding feed principles will enable companies to implement AI at scale with confidence, knowing responsible AI will help them avoid issues further down the road or even cost correct. We are grateful for the opportunity to co-drive the adoption of responsible AI across the industry through this challenge with MAS. I would like to thank our industry partners, from global financial institutions to technology providers and government agencies for their continuous support. Every one of you have been vital in helping us shape and design the experience of this year's challenge. A big thank you for gifting your precious time towards conducting the masterclasses, mentoring the 10 finalists, and for contributing personal time towards the judging. Let's take the next few minutes to share some highlights of the journey thus far.
in use by our customers uh, and is designed for scalability. What is different about our tool is that we've made uh, many of the SDKs that are out there can be quite technical. Bedroom is a user-guided AI solution that empowers the user and show fairness. Technical uh, bias detection mitigation, but also links that up with uh, uh, governance reporting to management. We took the following approach when tackling this problem. We look at existing research papers, interview expert mentors from financial institutions. What you see now on the screen, uh, that's the mitigation framework. So we have um, um, conducted this project um, through uh, the six phases. Let's talk a little bit about the product. If I have to describe the product in one word, this would be simplicity. Unfairly excluded from the credit scoring and profile process due to uh, having thin uh, data files. We believe our starting position is that fairness in AI and trust in AI is as much as about the data, if not more about the data than about models. Accenture is very proud to co-host this event with MAS, which represents a new milestone in Singapore's responsible AI adoption. MAS is delighted to see participation from fintechs, technology providers, and financial institutions around the world. The Global Veritas Challenge is a major step in this ongoing journey to drive responsible use of AI and data analytics in the financial sector. Through Global Veritas Challenge, we will collaborate with MAS to identify new innovative solutions from market leaders to accelerate the implementation of fair and ethical use of AI. It is with great pleasure for me to announce the three winning teams of the Global Veritas Challenge 2021. And they are in no particular order, Visa, Silinx, TrueEra and Dimist. In addition, we'd like to thank the rest of the finalists and present them with the Global Veritas Challenge Merit Award. Congratulations, winners. Next up, let's dive into each of our three winning solutions. You will be able to experience their pitch and learn from our judges what their winning formula is. First up, we have Nui Perswani representing her team from Visa, where they tackled the need for more inclusive and fair marketing with AI. Today, I'd like to introduce the Fairness Toolkit as a new solution that we have developed to demonstrate the business and broader societal value of AI fairness. The use of artificial intelligence in product marketing has become increasingly common. However, recent examples of harms caused by models trained without fairness criteria include denial of services to key groups and unintended harm to the vulnerable. Therefore, when using AI in any domain, we must ensure that the solutions are non-discriminatory and safeguard the consumers. With this goal in mind, our toolkit advocates a more human-centric AI. Currently, AI practitioners train models through fairness and aware pipelines. However, with our fairness toolkit, we are making the process of incorporating fairness into modeling workflows more intuitive. The challenge is that there is no universal definition of fairness, so this decision cannot be automated entirely. In some cases, being fair means that the most qualified individuals should get better outcomes regardless of their socioeconomic status, while in other cases, demographic parity is needed. Therefore, our solution provides that flexible perspective on fairness to stakeholders who make decisions on the outcome of an AI-generated output. And what is unique about our tool is that we have adopted a human-centric approach. A piece of code is not going to solve the fairness question in isolation. Therefore, our toolkit enables a responsible AI governance where we facilitate shared accountability between developers or data scientists within financial institutions or vendors, deployers who are model or product owners, and oversight teams such as model risk management, auditors or regulators. Our goal is to ensure that they are equipped with the right tools to balance competing priorities while protecting the customer from the harms of badly designed AI. The outcome of our solution is to build more fairness, accountability and transparency in the AI decision making process. With our tool, AI developers can train models more intuitively with fairness. Specifically, we have accomplished this by extending and tailoring the Microsoft Fairlearn library to the needs of businesses in this use case, and also by providing fairness tutorials to bridge the knowledge gap to technical communities. 
Crucially for deployers, we have demonstrated that inclusive marketing and fairness can also bring revenue to businesses by improving customer lifetime value and increasing campaign diversity. And finally, oversight teams can also receive better audit trails from development teams and assess the fairness of a model prior to any exter external deployment with quantifiable criteria. With this approach, stakeholders can have shared accountability on AI fairness. Finally, we envision a world where financial institutions can ingest our toolkit as part of routine machine learning development workflows and AI operations to ensure that models pass fairness checks before they are deployed externally. With this, we would like to show you a demo of our solution. AI developers want to incorporate fairness workflows more intuitively and seamlessly into their model building. So we provide that by showing them, for example, fairness accuracy trade-offs. AI deployers, who are also typically decision makers or product owners, also want to understand how fairness is going to impact their business success. When we look at the top graph, we can see different models that have been trained with different fairness parameters. We have unaware models that don't have any constraints on fairness, individual fairness models that have had sensitive attributes and protected classes removed, and group fairness models that are trained with different constraints against protected classes. In the long run, if we look at the profit of each individual campaign, although the unaware and individual fairness models may have a higher profit in the short term, we can also use the Visa Fairness Toolkit to quantify the long-term value of fairness. Finally, oversight teams such as model risk management can also use this toolkit as a decision support tool that would enable them to assess which models pass the performance, fairness, and business criteria before the models are deployed externally. We have shown you from the demo that previously AI developers had challenges in making AI models fair or now with the toolkit, we have provided them a user-friendly and intuitive approach to build comparative, comparative fairness into their technical workflows. AI deployers now understand the long-term dollar value of fairness and include it more routinely in the model building process. And oversight teams are now empowered with transparency and accountability in auditing models. So at the end, what we're doing is to protect the consumer from the harm of potentially unfair AI. Celine, Zekin and Jeremy, please share your views. Thank you very much for that nice presentation. I think that what I like from the visa um, use cases was really this stakeholder approach that the team has taken uh, in order to be able to develop their solution, answering to an end-to-end -end integration of, uh, of the toolkit within the whole development of the AI, but as well the deployment and the control function, having you know um, automated monitoring of the behavior of the AI and the fact that we also see the consumer in, uh, in this overall uh, solution design. I like also the fact that you know uh, it's been a global team made of people that are uh, from Singapore, UK, San Francisco, Japan, right? And when we talk about fairness and inclusion, it's good to also have a various diverse group of people, men and women uh, from uh, various different countries, to be able to design a, a fair and ethical solution. And um, and finally, the the solution which has a you know bias mitigation. Uh, by reducing the, the feature uh, over dominant into the model. So, you know, it's not only about assessment of the fairness, but also, you know, how can we mitigate um, unfairness uh, behavior of the model, right? So it seems to me that it's a great end-to-end -end, um, fairness assessment and solution uh, for uh, product marketing and campaign, which is one of the big use cases um, in, the, in the industry. Yeah, and um, I, I particularly like uh, the, the focus that they brought uh, in um, identifying very clearly the um, commercial uh, objective, right, uh, which is uh, to optimize for the long term uh, instead of maximizing uh, for the short term. Uh, and this is, uh, what, uh, this is borne out by what they managed to um, um, identify as an over-targeting uh, over of those uh, above 60. They were also very clear in identifying um, the stakeholders um, defining the roles that um, AI um, uh, developers play, uh, the deployers play, and of, and, and of course, um, the role played by the um, uh, audit teams, right? Uh, but I think the third uh, point which uh, really won me over was the fact that they took a very human-centric approach. They, they identified very clearly 
right, the, the clear beneficiary of this effort, which is the end customers. I'll be very keen to see how, uh, after deployment, uh, they continue to monitor the performance of um, these models and how they can uh, con uh, put in place processes to improve uh, with uh, adjustments uh, as the uh, model is in use. So congratulations. I only echo what my co-judges mentioned. So what stood out for me in the Visa demo is their holistic and stakeholder-centric approach. Indeed, uh, AI fairness is not just about a piece of code. And being from the official sector, having effective governance to us is quite important in achieving AI fairness. So, you know, everyone from AI developer to user, from oversight to audit, should have tools that would make it easier for them to do their respective roles. Uh, another thing that I really appreciate in the Visa demo is their recognition of the business benefits of AI fairness, you know, that inclusion leads to value. And I think this is worth emphasizing. So well done and congratulations to Visa. Thank you, judges. Next, we have Timothy Lin from Silinx. His proprietary solution, Verify ML, aims to be an integrated open source toolkit to help tackle the areas of risk, compliance, and fraud monitoring. Let's hear from Timothy. Hi everyone, I am Timothy from Silinx, and today I'm proud to introduce Verify ML, our open source toolkit to help companies implement responsible AI workflows. The main problem we're trying to solve is the following. How can fairness be incorporated in the algorithm's development, data handling, and production process to ensure no unintended biases? We consulted numerous research papers, interviewed mentors from financial institutions, as well as existing tools and frameworks. Eventually, we set up to create an open source governance framework and Python library to help you build reliable and fair IDA models. With more than five classes of tests covering 20 different types of fairness requirements, Verify ML fits with your favorite Python workflow and library. It gives you the confidence and peace of mind that models being deployed meets prescribed fairness and performance criteria. And lastly, it aligns with the MAS fairness objectives, both the spirit and requirement of the MAS fairness assessment methodology. Verify ML consists of three parts, a survey form, which gathers inputs and aligns stakeholders across product, data science and compliance, a model card, which acts as a source of truth for model details, quantitative and qualitative results, and this gets fed to a model report with automated, automated documentations and test switch, which assists in performance monitoring and review. So let's take a look at an example use case of a credit card transaction fraud model. In this credit card transaction fraud example, the business is interested in maximizing both recall and precision. Onto the fairness considerations, a team can include both quantitative and qualitative results. For example, they might want to state what the expected benefits and harms are to particular groups at risk. Onto the fairness checks, the team adds minimum acceptable service as a fairness analysis to be conducted. This requires the false positive rate for the model to be below 2.5% for both age and gender. They also add an equal false positive rate check. These inputs to the web form are converted to a standardized model card schema, which can be read with the Python toolkit. For example, the minimum acceptable service level requirement translates to a min-max metric threshold test, which can be imported from the library. Running the test produces useful diagnostic plots. Our solution also allows easy comparisons between models so that you're able to understand the trade-off between them. Let's take a look at the credit card fraud model without the protected attributes against the second model with the, protect with the protected attributes. The first model performs better in terms of recall and precision values, but it fails the subgroup disparity test, which we have defined earlier. A model is considered production worthy only if it passes both the performance and fairness checks, which we have initially set out. Let's take a look at example model card for such a successful model. This contains information about the model details, its considerations, the data sets being used, the quantitative analysis, the explainability analysis and results, as well as the fairness checks, which we have set out. We can run this model card every time a new model is being pushed or model is updated. We can also run it on a regular basis as part of an audit check to make sure that the model in performance continue to behave as we initially intend it to be. All right, now we have seen an example of one model, but how does it look like at scale? At scale, we have a full model, we have a full model card store 
with many different model cards that contains the results of the evolution of the model's history over time. This is fully searchable and auditable. To conclude, Verify ML helps align stakeholders across product, data science, and compliance. It improves safeguards for your model's development process, improves model's reliability, and helps you achieve fairness through awareness. If you are, happy, if you are interested in contributing to our project, do check out our GitHub link below. Thank you very much. Judges Johnson, Ben, Mary, let's hear from each of you what you thought about Verify ML. This presentation and this product was really, really exciting. I really like the fact that um, it was an open source governance framework and a Python library, and that is what makes it really scalable. I also like that they thought about uh, the users, both from data scientists to product managers to governance. Um, this is a very, very usable product, so it's really exciting, um, an automated documentation process. Um, I look forward to seeing um, the future roadmap and um, uh, seeing the product deployed uh, at scale. Over to you. Thank you, Mary. So Team Salinx, uh, fantastic presentation. Thanks a lot for that. Maybe just quickly on the pitch, I thought it was very well paced and it made it really easy for us to follow you. And you put the key highlights of the features of the solution out there. And I thought that was uh, difficult to do, especially in such a short time. Uh, but So thanks for doing that. Um, maybe a couple of thoughts on the points that stood out from a content perspective. So first, uh, it really showed that you spend a lot of time with domain experts on the business side, right? So you showed a very thorough understanding of the ins and outs of the credit card fraud process and um, made it very clear what kind of trade-offs there are between business objectives and user journeys on the one hand side and then fairness principles on the others. And I thought it was also great that you pointed out uh, that more work could be done, for example, with regards to certain vulnerable segments, such as elderly segments. Um, I think the second point that I wanted to bring up is um, that your solution is not only go geared towards um, data scientists and engineers, right? Um, but you took a broad approach where you are uh, solving for a large stakeholder audience, so to speak. So bring in the business perspective and product owners as well as potential risk management and compliance functions. And that really reflects, I guess, the reality and how uh, you know, stakeholders actually come together at one table. And then lastly, um, what I thought was really good is that you decided to go the open source route. And I will admit that I don't necessarily think that open source is necessarily the panacea for everything. But in this particular case, and given where we are, uh, with regards to the phase of responsible AI adoption, I think that open source makes a lot of sense to draw in a lot of uh, ecosystem participants to share improvements and innovation and with that drive adoption of responsible AI in financial services. So again, uh, well done, great presentation. Thanks, uh, Silinx, for the presentation. Um, there are three things that stood out for me. Uh, firstly, the solution is human-centric and well-structured to bridge the gap between existing open-source technology and MES feed principles. Uh, secondly, the workflow is simple uh, yet comprehensive, having incorporated the uh, specific steps right, in the MES uh, Veritas Fairness methodology uh, in translating business requirements to code. Uh, last but not least, uh, the, the team displayed a good understanding of the challenges of applying AI in the banking and financial sector, as well as presented a sound roadmap for scaling the solution. So given the ease of use by data scientists and developers, uh, I'm optimistic that the solution will be well adopted in the industry. Thank you. Thank you for sharing with us your insights. And now we have our final winning team, a joint partnership between Truera and Demist. Shamit Kundu and Scott Elbin will share with us how they intend to improve fairness and bring accuracy in credit decisioning. Hello, I'm Scott from DMIST and I co-led this submission to the Veritas Challenge with Shamit from Tuera. We believe that fairness in AI is as much about the data as about the model itself, particularly when third-party data is being used. So our two companies got together. Tuera, a startup focused on AI transparency and fairness, and DMIST an external data platform servicing the financial industry for over a decade. So what's under the hood of our entry? First, we took a curated data set from DMIST on US households, 
we built a basic machine learning model to predict creditworthiness in that data set. And then finally, we used Truera's fairness assessment toolkit to understand whether the model was biased and or inaccurate. We found that it was both. It was biased and inaccurate for black households, which was our chosen protected group. We then used the insights from the fairness assessment toolkit to target mitigation actions, including dropping some proxy and black box features and enhancing it with third party data. The net result was a more accurate and fairer model. Take a look at how we did it. Hello. In this fairness workflow demo, we do six things. One, define a protected group or group of interest. Two, set a fairness objective. Three, assess relative disadvantage for the protected group. Four, assess root causes of disadvantage. Five, conduct targeted interventions. And six, analyze fairness versus accuracy trade-off for each intervention. Protected groups can be introduced by creating new segments using one or more of the model's input features or an excluded input variable, which is not used for training. In this US-focused example, we chose to treat black households as the protected group. Note that the percentage of black households in the training dataset, 14.7%, is comparable to the overall black population in the US. The next step is to set out our fairness objective. We do this in two steps. First, we select a suitable fairness metric from a rich set of metrics available in the system. Then we set an acceptable range for the value of that metric. In this example, the metric chosen is equality of opportunity ratio, with an acceptable range of plus or minus 30%. The next step is to assess whether black households are significantly disadvantaged compared to the rest of the population. The answer seems to be yes. The equal opportunity ratio is just 0.55, instead of the ideal 1 or even the acceptable 0.7. Additionally, the model is also more inaccurate for black households, with an AUC of 0.84 compared to 0.94 for the rest of the population. Measuring relative disadvantage is arguably the easy part. Identifying the root causes behind such disparity is more difficult. Zooming in, we look for two things features that are proxies for race, and features that might be difficult to justify due to their black box nature. Turns out that there are examples of both in this instance. The geocode and postcode features contribute more than a third of the disparity between black households and the rest, and may be seen as proxies for race in the US context. Two other calculated features, underbanked flag and economic stability indicator, contribute about 20% more to the disparity. These are black box features and difficult to justify. So here we are with a baseline model that is inaccurate, perhaps unfairly biased, and dependent on potential proxy or black box features. What can we do by way of mitigation? Two things. First, we could remove these proxy and black box features and retrain the model. Second, we could supplement the existing data with complementary alternate data such as tax information. We tried both, with striking results. The equality of opportunity metric goes up from 0.55 in the original model, in green, to 0.66 after the first intervention, in blue, and then 0.71 after the second, in orange. Black households are now much less disadvantaged. Not only that, but we also find that the model becomes more accurate for black households between the baseline green model and the final version in orange. The accuracy remains almost unchanged for the rest of the population through these interventions. So there we have it, a model that is both less disadvantaged and more accurate for black households. Judges Gunjan, Hans and Lachlan do share with us what stood up for each of you. I think I found a few things very exciting. I think first, uh, they were quite courageous in identifying and addressing the problem that, you know, fairness has a lot to do with the data used. Uh, it's a hairy problem, it's a messy problem, but they were, they were bold enough to sort of call it out and do something about it. Um, uh, I think it's not about complex algorithms or, you know, uh, machine learning approaches, but if, if your data is not right, then uh, more often than not, you're going to get 
uh, wrong uh, uh, results. I think their, secondly, their uh, solution uh, is quite innovative in the sense that they not only help diagnose where the problem is, but they also help uh, identify, uh, based on the diagnosis, uh, how can supplementing data help improve the model efficacy. Now, uh, that's, that's a really, uh, there's a certain amount of simplicity and elegance to that, where as you diagnose the problem data elements, it gives you a suggestion around where should you look for supplementing data. And thirdly, uh, I think the, uh, the, the approach that they took in terms of how to solve for it is very inclusive. I think it gives a, a lot of opportunity for wider players in the ecosystem to help with data partnerships. And which means that as more and more uh, uh, players uh, partner in terms of data, notwithstanding the ethical and the privacy challenges, it becomes a collective responsibility to deal with a hairy problem like fairness and bias. Um, congratulations again, and I uh, wish you all the best on seeing this deploy in many more areas. Thank you. Um, thanks again, and it's really, really great to be here. So firstly, let me offer my congratulations and well done to every one of the finalists. Everybody's done a really, really great job in terms of getting here. And for me personally, a lot of the concepts that are being really esoteric in nature now are being brought to reality with these toolkits that are coming. I only wish I could be in Singapore to join and celebrate with you all. Unfortunately, however, I'm not able to. So in addition to what my fellow judges have already said before, what really stood out for me personally was the partnership between two areas and Deminist was the team's focus dually on both the data pipeline as well as the model, which for me was a really innovative approach in terms of applying both data pre-processing to validate the model and also provide a toolkit that you know, was, a little, was way more flexible than it would have been with just one on its own. And for me, it proved really, really clearly when confronted by difficult challenges, the best approach is to consider it from different perspectives, which both organizations did really, really well. And their collaboration across the entire value chain, I think produced a really, really amazing and innovative result. So AI firms for me is more than just the code. You know, this is a capability that produces decisions that really affect real people. And at the end of the day, the team was very clearly able to articulate in their pitch that their toolkit was ready to use. Their individual penetration within the financial services ecosystem was only enhanced by their collaboration. So both organizations were able to were able to accelerate the adoption of their tool. And so I kind of look at their dual track approach, gaining uh, traction within the ecosystem, and I look forward to seeing them growing and maturing, but very, very well done. And it was a very impressive solution. Congratulations to all the finalists uh, and especially to the three winners. It was an absolute pleasure seeing all the work and the innovation that everyone has brought to this challenge. I wish I could be there with everyone now, but I'm uh, here in Australia today. So my thoughts echo those of the other judges, really. Truera and Demist have demonstrated that often a great way to improve a model's fairness is to acquire more data that actually helps better predict outcomes. And they've demonstrated this in a realistic setting with real data. And though improving fairness often involves trade-offs, as they demonstrated, Truer and Dimis solution showed that those trade-offs can be made more favorable. One of the benefits of Truer's solution was also the ability to surface statistical relationships between the data and the fairness performance of their model. And as they showed, this can help direct data acquisition efforts and highlight variables that might be acting as proxies of protected attributes. That was an impressive uh, demonstration of the features of their software, which was also clearly very mature. Finally, Truera and Demist's presentation itself was impressive. They clearly demonstrated the value of their approach, the flexibility of their software, and what makes their entry distinctive, all while acknowledging the difficult and context-sensitive nature of addressing AI fairness. So congratulations, Truera and Demist. Chichun, you must be eager about collaborating with our finalists and accelerating the Veritas journey. Do share your thoughts. Thank you, Kate. This marks the end of the Global Veritas Challenge 2021. Once again, congratulations to all our winners and finalists. And a big thank you to all participants, finalists, 
mentors, and judges for coming together to support the challenge. Our work does not end here. In fact, we have much to do. The Veritas Consortium is continuing its work on helping financial institutions using artificial intelligence and data analytics responsibly. Do look out for coming announcement soon. Thank you for joining us today, and I hope you continue to have an enjoyable and enriching experience here at the Singapore FinTech Festival 2021.